So I've got a bit of space cleared in the workshop and it's time for the next project. So let's go and pick up the stapley. So here we have the stapley then. Um, we don't know a huge amount about her history other than she was built 69, 70, around that period uh, for Dennis Holmes and he used the boat for ski racing. The boat was originally named Pisces and raced with a straight six Merc engine, as far as we know. Uh, she measures a little under 17 foot and that's pretty much it really for history wise. It's a little bit vague on this boat. so. If you know anything about the boat or you recognize it or the name, it'd be really good to piece together a bit more history from the boat. So uh, let us know in the comments below or drop me an email or something like that if you know any more about the boat. It'd be good to, uh, to find out some more information. So the boat was built by Ray Stapley and the history of that is a little bit vague as well. I'm not 100% sure on it. So again, if anybody can provide some insight into the, uh, the history, that would be quite nice to find out. By all accounts, Ray Stapley bought the shell of the hull from um, Tremlett Boats, who built boats very similar to this down in Topsham in Devon. Um, these actually differ from the Tremlets in quite a number of ways. I've got a Tremlet myself, and uh, it's a much more beamy boat than this. So they're quite different in their shape. I don't know quite where along the build process that changed, but um, these are definitely not sort of from the exact same mold as the Tremlets, or possibly from the same mold but altered slightly in their production process. So it'd be nice to find out uh, where those differences lied and uh, how that process changed. Perhaps Ray started to build these boats himself as opposed to buying the shells from Tremlets at some stage in their history. Uh, we're not really sure. There's a definite difference in the layup of this boat as well. I've got a Tremlet which is a 1970s boat we think this is a 6970, but the glue in between the veneers is different. So there was obviously a difference in the process there somewhere. This is a black tar sort of recoursonol type glue. And the glue in my Tremlet is more like the cascomite powdered uh, glue. It's gone really brittle. And so my Tremlet's suffering with delamination a lot worse than this is. This hull is still really structurally sound. Uh, none of the veneers are starting to lift or peel. Um, whereas my Tremlet, they're all kind of lifting on the edges of the veneers, particularly on the outside. And the Tremlets seem to suffer a lot more with that. So there's obviously differences there in the production somewhere down the line. So it'd be nice to try and get a bit of history uh, behind that if anybody knows any more about it. Perhaps works at the factory or with Ray or at Tremlets and might, might know some uh, more information about it. It'd be great to find that out if we can. So as you can see, I've already done a little bit of work to this boat. Uh, it came in for a new deck originally because it was all coming apart along the shear lines. Everything had just kind of worked its way loose. So uh, the first thing I did was just to investigate what was going on there. So we stripped all the old deck off. And what we'd found was that pretty much every one of these deck beams had come away um, along the gunnels. And the whole hull had obviously just been flexing and pulled itself apart basically. So everything on there was loose. So what I've done is I've just reseated all the deck beams. I've cleaned them up, epoxied them back in place and filleted them and basically just put a bit of structure back into the boat and got it um, so it's not going to move. One of the things I came across when investigating that was that the, uh, the paint 
or the epoxy that was put on inside the boat was actually coming away from the wood. We know that the current owner had the boat sandblasted and epoxied when he first got it. So it should be a really good finish on there. And what leads me to think that that's probably happened is that water has come in from the outside of the hull and soaked up through the wood and actually lifted that epoxy off the surface of the wood. So that sort of led into investigation with what was going on with the hull. And we actually found some cracks just down the forward part of the keel here sort of work transitions into the stem and also quite a bit around the transom as well. There was obviously water coming in uh, where the transom seats against the hull and that again was starting to lift the paint. So that kind of turned it into a bit more of a than just doing the deck because we also then needed to look at the hull. So what I've done for now, as I say, is just put all the deck beams back into the boat and get it structurally sound. Um, and then we'll need to turn the boat over and we're going to strip back the hull and have a look at what's really going on underneath there. Do any repairs that need to be done to that to make it watertight and uh, nice and strong again. And then we'll proceed on with the deck. So up in the forward end of the boat then, you can see the area there down by the keel where I've stripped all the loose epoxy away. So what I'm thinking has probably caused that will be a split in the hull up here in the forward section. And we're going to get that stainless keel band off there and have a look what's going on underneath once we get the hull upside down. You can also see there's a pretty similar sort of thing going on around the transom so looks like we've had some water ingress pretty much all the way around where the transom joins the hull and uh, that again has created that sort of flaky paint epoxy that's just come away there and become loose. So I've got rid of all of that. It doesn't look like it's set in too much which is quite nice. Although there's a lot of blackening to the wood here, there's very little rot actually gone on. So it's not been, um, it's not been too destructive, which is nice. Not really a great, great deal of soft wood or anything like that. Luckily, it's not too far gone. I think if it had carried on a bit longer, then um, probably would have started to deteriorate the wood. Or certainly if it had sat with water in it for any length of time, I think we'd be looking at uh, a bit of a different restoration here. So that's nice that it's not, uh, it's not done too much damage. So you can see that there's no framework to the boat other than the deck beams. These are just a cold molded hull made of diagonal layers of veneer laid up over a mold. So it makes these boats really strong and lightweight, um, really nice boats actually. You can just see there the top edge of the veneers where they finish. And this boat actually has six layers of veneer, which makes the hull 12 mil thick in total. Uh, that's the most layers that I've come across in any of these boats. Um, generally the Tremlet boats were built as three layers and you could order an additional layer to make that up to four in some instances. And all of the documentation that I've seen for the Tremlets uh, kind of quotes that, but uh, this was obviously beefed up a fair amount. Um, so this is the thickest hull that I've seen from any of the state police or the tremlets actually. Uh, perhaps that's the reason behind the hull surviving quite so well. But uh, yeah, it's definitely a, a nice strong structure. So that's a bit of a look around the boat and uh, bring you up to speed on, on where we're at so far. A little bit of history for it. And as I say, if you know any history about the boat or the process behind the build of these, uh, please get in touch. It'd be really interesting to find out a bit more. So that's pretty much it for now. Uh, the next thing I'm going to be getting on with will be turning the boat over and making a start on stripping the hull back to see what's going on under there. So uh, look out for the next episode where we'll be making a start on the work. Okay, so I hope you found it interesting. Thanks for watching.